Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are in the world, around the globe, we greet you and welcome to join our joining our Aquarius Solar Festival webinar. And uh, my name is Alexander, and I welcome you on behalf of the 2025 Initiatives Coordination Group. And before we start our webinar today, we'll have a short alignment. So let's align with our own soul coming in a place of inner silence. And we visualize the planet, cover it with a network of light, with millions and millions sparks of radiant glowing light. and see how some of this light come into the circle, gathering today for our work together. And we connect with each other with love and light. linking our hearts and minds. And we connect in a group heart center radiant rose of light And then we project our heart center, connecting it with the heart center of the new group of world servers. We extend this alignment further, aligning with the heart center of the hierarchy, spiritual hierarchy of the planet, the Christ.
and we open up our group consciousness to the radiance of the sign of Aquarius. And as we will work together to, today, we will keep this alignment, sending the radiance of our circle to the world and to humanity. Strengthening the hands of the new group of world servers. And um, so uh, we begin our meeting tonight, today, and uh, I have a big pleasure to introduce our guest today. Uh, oh, I would rather say our guests. I don't know if I should <laughs> use a plural or singular because today uh, we... Mm, Welcome the entire community, the living ethics community from Italy, from Città della Pieve. And uh, when a year ago we asked community that if they would be interested to present today, and they talked to each other and they decided that yes, and they delegated Elisabetta Raspini to present on their behalf. And so Elisabetta today with us. Hi, Elisabetta. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. So good to hear you. Yes, same. Yes. And um, Elisabetta now is in Città della Pieve in Italy, and it's a very special place on the planet, I would say. And I, 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 I had a joy and honor to be at the community a few years ago, and it's definitely a very special place. And um, I'm really grateful to you, Elisabetta, and to the community that you are today with us and you're going to share with us about yeah. your community and your work. Yeah, yeah. And so I, uh, we, we asked Elisabetta that she just would tell us about the community and because there are so many things that uh, they can share and like definitely don't have enough time for all of that but whatever come please tell us because experience of your community is definitely unique and as we are now in the under the sign of Aquarius and we know that Aquarius is the sign that really invokes the group consciousness and the stimulates all of us for group work the experience of your community is really really precious for all of us for the entire ageless within the community worldwide so yeah. Please tell us whatever you feel like sharing today. Yes, yes. So first of all, I would like to say hello to everyone and uh, thank Alexander and the friends of the 2025 initiative for gathering these meetings every month. Uh, I feel that this is a great contribution for all of us, you know, to prepare the way for the standardization of the hierarchy and the return. And I feel it is a great occasion. And besides what we present, which is of value, of course, every time, I think it is really the occasion to build together a field of love, of uh, cooperation, of brotherhood. So I see these webinars um, as a place where we can all bring our energy in order to create this planetary group field in service to humanity and the hierarchy, to know each other, to exchange our friendship, a place where we can acknowledge you know, the griefs that each one brings every time in the respect of, and of the diversity that each one represents. So really, I think it's a beautiful initiative. 
And uh, it is a great pleasure for me as well to present the community, being a long-time member and uh, feeling part of, totally part of the community. Uh, even though I must say that it's not easy at all to speak <laughs> with all of you without being together, without you know being in the same place, looking at each other's eye, but. I say let's thank the technology anyway because it allows these kind of meetings anyway. And um, I would like to start uh, the presentation of the community by sharing the motto. We have an affirmation that has guided our thoughts and our deeds since the start of the community and uh, which allowed us to establish the clear focus and intent on the subtle levels of our purpose, of our task. And uh, this motto says the community is neither a place nor a group of people. It is a state of consciousness leading us into the new era. And this has been a sort of premises to all that we have been then discovered to be our group purpose and uh, that I will start sharing during this presentation. The adhesion to the community, I would say, is characterized by the engagement in the work of building a group consciousness and inspired by the principles of living ethics. What we try to keep in mind and express is the livingness of the laws and principles and the qualities such as brotherhood, cooperation, participating and bringing this in our everyday living. And uh, what to say, the community started uh, in 1981, it's a, a non-religious uh, cultural association located near Città delle Pieve. Now Alexander is showing you some pictures that can maybe give you a little hint of the place where we are. Uh, Città delle Pieve is a small medieval hill town in the center of Italy. Uh, for those who have been here, it's halfway between Rome and Florence in the land of St. Francis. In fact, St. Assisi is uh, the, it's one hour drive from the community. The community was founded in 1982 by Sergio Bartoli, who was um, a disciple of Roberto Seggioli, and 11 co-workers. Uh, you can see now the picture of Poggio del Fuoco, which is the first building that we have uh, built in the community. This is where the activities started. And as I was saying, at the beginning, it, the meaning was more of having a place for the study and practice of psychosynthesis. And uh, Sergio himself was a, a psychiatrist and a psychologist as well as other co-workers. But the vision uh, developed and expanded immediately, very soon into, into a center for creative meditation, inspired since the beginning by the study and application of the principles of living ethics, uh, derived from the study of the three main teachings, which are the Agni Yoga, the ed Edgeless Wisdom, uh, the work of Ellis Bailey and in the last few years also by the introduction of the new thought from presentation of the wisdom by Lucille Sedercrantz. So this is uh, also another picture of the whole of culture and uh, but I would like to start by introducing some key factors who characterize uh, our group effort and initiative before entering in the, into the details of our activity and group life. And so the main focus, as I was saying, it has been since the beginning, the growth and development of consciousness, the creation of a group consciousness, and the creation for a creation of the conditions for the accomplishment of a group 
planetary task to be expressed and witnessed in the everyday living and in group formation. But the community also has uh, not a, a separate center on the planet, but as a point of light connected and within a large network of points of light represented by all individuals and groups focused and working around the world with the same aim to plant uh, the seeds for a new culture based on spiritual values to embody those seeds through self-improvement, self-striving, really for the establishment of a new world order, for the embodiment of the living ethics in, in, the, in the life of each individual and especially within a group as a cell of, of uh, new life. And uh, during the years we have established many beautiful relationships with many fellow groups around the world, relationships which have grown and developed during time all around the roots of the teachings. And like if we have been witnessing, you know, each one, each group, the talents, you know, the gifts and the striving that each one was able to bring into the common field. And um, for similarity of purpose, uh, I just bring some examples of soul-related groups like, you know, the Finland community in Scotland, and Auroville in, in India, uh, with which we have an incredible, beautiful relation. And, uh, but also groups like Sandal House in the UK, Meditation Mountain in California, many groups in South America, all engaged really in this uh, planetary service. So the community as a cell of new life, but connected and as an integral part of this wider network of group of people around the world. So going to the motivation and our sense of identity, uh, today we can say that we identify like as a, live, a living organism, conscious to be a living organism, and all the life of the community is structured around this image of organs, of systems, uh, where we all try to work uh, synthesizing and uh, um, trying to, to um, uh, uh, experience and experiment uh, in group work um, our purpose which is the, the one of contributing to the uh, establishment of a new world culture and a new civilization and this is done every day through a group process of trial and error and we try to refine uh, our attunement, attunement to our group soul and we try to see every day how we can best accomplish our part in the one work to be of service to the plan and humanity. And the intent is really that of creating a cell of new life and to embody this new life into practical form through group experience and through the application of the basics of the laws and principles of what Master D.K. calls the Kingdom of God, which are right human relations, goodwill, group endeavor, unanimity, spiritual approach, and essential divinity. So group action and group leadership especially after the death of our founder and service as a key because we have been for more than 30 years built the community through the effort and the work of volunteer work of all of us which is one of our characteristic and continues to be our, uh, one uh, of the of, of the great gifts that we also think we receive from being part of a group because we receive a lot while we serve. 
and uh, but the main effort and challenge uh, as an esoteric group it has been and it is to bring this the esoteric teachings into practical expression into practical form into the matter within the society and through a shared group life this is really the key of our work we try to anchor and spread these new models of life in all and um, so uh, really uh, the key the, the the very key of all of this is to embody the theoretical knowledge into the world of forms and you will see through the presentation that we will show you uh, the many fields in which uh, the activity at, uh, of the community is expressed which is through uh, also buildings but also through um, the work that we do uh, uh, during the year. Do you have any uh, Alexander? Hello? Shall I go on? Uh, yes, yes, Elizabeth, please go on. Okay, okay. So I would like to now, maybe after this introduction, tell you more about um, the activities of the community, which, uh, which have been developed and grown through the creative and practical skills contributed by a large number of members and friends who have chosen to participate to this group endeavor. At present, uh, a large proportion of members live locally, but others come from all over Italy and also from other countries. And uh, all of us all of, uh, take part as participants in the schools, but we also take part as collaborators in the community life. And um, we now count about 140 people who are very committed to the community, who participate fully to the schools, to the programs, uh, to the meditation activities, to the service activities. And out of this, about 60 people reside in the in proximity of the community centers either in, uh, one, in, uh, in the two residential villages that we have or in the nearby small towns. So this is who we are. The activities during the, uh, the 20 years are reflected mainly through programs on uh, psycho-spiritual education. We have schools and courses in various fields such as education, including education for children and teenagers, uh, um, creative meditation. We have a three years and ten year school on creative meditation, psychosynthesis and psychoenergetics, economics. We have um, a school of art because culture is really key also and beauty are keys in the community work, healing, astrology. So around all the esoteric teachings we have um, created the opportunity to offer schools and courses to the participants in our, in our activities. Another branch is the, the, are the events that we organize um, and maybe you can show some pictures, uh, Alexander, uh, you can scroll down. And so we have uh, spiritual gatherings and also cultural and um, cultural activities. You can see inside the Hall of Culture, this is the hall where the performance are take, take place and um, every year we also have important gatherings like the Day of Culture and the yearly Creative Meditation Gathering. And um, I don't see the picture, yes. And um, so what we organize inside the hall are also events, performances. We have live concerts where we invite singers or piano players or violins. We have chorus, ballet, 
uh, we have exhibitions of paintings, of sculptures, of photographs, and um, and this is done all inside the hall of culture. This was one um, um, theater performance that we gave on the lives of the Rurics last year. Now we are bringing this all over Italy in the different centers. So this is another aspect of the community. Another aspect which is very important is the service activity, as I was saying before. And maybe you can you can go down and show these are some art work from friends who come. This was a work on the light. And um, and service activity, as I was saying before. Since the beginning, all our times as skill have been offered as a service without receiving any remuneration as a form of donation. And so um, you can see we have um, um, the possibility to join groups working in the kitchen or in the garden or working in the offices. Here you see some friends of the community. I wanted to bring some photos because the <laughs> it's not easy to <laughs> to speak about the activity of a group life, you know, over 30 years without showing any pictures. And so I hope you enjoy looking also at this. And we also have um, the community life, which is very important. What we call the new city of humanity, uh, which includes two beautiful residential villages. One is Sun Valley, and the other one is the Granary, and uh, where many of us live, and where the community life is experienced. Uh, this uh, the organization of the life in these villages includes common spaces. Uh, where to meet, common utilities, and also occasions to work together with the, with the children. We have, and we bring together, for instance, in the previous pictures, you know, our elderly, which can give their talents and their gifts together with the children. This is just, you know, just an example of community life. And um, another important, uh, you also saw the, the, the flowers of, we also, this is the saffron, we collect, we harvest uh, the plants and we have activities connected also uh, with the harvesting and selling of the, of the saffron. And um, another important activity or task of the community is that uh, of creation of different form of associations and businesses connected with the community as new models of cooperation and also entrepreneurship because we try to encourage and to promote and be part of within this association to create new models in, in different fields. For instance, we have the culture, a cultural association uh, which promotes uh, cultural events and travel experiences. You saw something before in the hall. We have the Banner of Peace Association uh, with the 12 branches in city from the uh, north of the south of Italy. Uh, for the building of a network of a culture of peace and goodwill. Uh, we should have, yes, uh, one uh, flag of the banner of peace. We also have a center for the production and transformation of agricultural products. There is a laboratory for the production and selling of herbal products. Um, the, the associ an association from the promotion and editing of books as such, the books of Agni Yoga in Italian. So these are also the fields of what we are trying to uh, put in place. When we say that we bring into the form is to create new models, but also to make these models applicable and visible. And so people engage in, in trying to organize themselves in, uh, into associations and into in entrepreneurship uh, businesses in order to bring these new models into, into form. There is also a school for naturopathy. So just to mention some of the activities of the community. 
and uh, we also you you cannot see much from the picture but a lot of attention and love is given to beauty and the relations with the kingdoms of nature which is very key for all of us uh, but in general all that I've been describing here is really connected with the applications and the laws and principles in, in whatever we do, trying to create uh, and to match our individual growth with being part of a group that is expressing and, uh, and wants to bring his uh, gifts into the world. And um, so this is, I just wanted to outline, you know, the, the main um, activities. And, um, but I don't know if there are any questions at this point or if we want to go on and see also the pictures of um, the centers of the community. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's one of the uh, uh, features of your community, it's this physical beauty of the space that your community occupies so probably we can go through the yeah pictures. yeah I just uh, picked up a few pictures of the several buildings that are part of the community we have several seven centers and um, and each uh, building carries out a specific activity and um, and each center is guided uh, by the principle that a synthesis between beauty and simplicity is really conducive to transformation of consciousness. So um, a lot of care and a lot of love has been put in the, in the creation of the, these buildings. And um, each building is uh, devoted to a specific function and activity. Uh, but nobody lives there. Just the teaching activities are um, are, are brought forward, you know, in, in these places. And so, for instance, this is Poggio de Fuoco. There was uh, the study center for the esoteric psychology. And then we have um, I don't know if you want to go. We have uh, San Michele which is a center for study of psycho, uh, psychoenergy and psychosynthesis. And then what do you have next? Uh, yeah, this is another picture of San Michele, the same place. And next, yeah, this is Igeia, which is a center for healing of the subtle body. And so specific um, seminars and courses are given there. And if you can go on, the whole of culture you saw before. And also, this is the Institute of uh, the Heart, the seat of the House of the Soul, and the Center for the Research and Experimentation on Psychic Energy. And next. Uh, yeah, and this is Uruzvati, the center for a new education. It's the seat for the Uruzvati school that hosts uh, courses for educators and young people. And uh, especially in the summertime where we have summer camps for children and youngsters. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. And next uh, you should see, yeah, and this is the picture of uh, some children with educators, you know, in the summer out of, um, of Uruzvati. And so, just to resume, uh, the commitment and task uh, today for us, uh, if we look at the community today, as we said before, not being neither uh, a place uh, nor a group of people is really to be a living experiment, a living experience of women and men of goodwill working as a united group consciousness and united in the group consciousness toward a common goal. And um, what the aim, as I was saying, is to contribute to the creation of the new, of a new year and to give birth to a new civilization as an expression of goodwill in action 
of right relation, being the common purpose, the magnet around which everything has been established in, in the community. All of us willing to joyfully participate to a spir spiritual and soul-guided adventure of uh, pioneering, as today we are in Aquarius and witnessing a new way of living, uh, responding mainly to the inner call of our soul. We always ask ourselves, you know, what is our deepest motivation to be here, to be together uh, in service to a higher plan, you know, to the planet, uh, to our fellow man. And um, the clear commitment, I would say, is from all of us uh, to offer ourselves, you know, to be channels of the models of what we would like to see in the future. And the commitment to, to realize them, you know, through study, meditation and service, which are the very practical tools that we try to use. And we do this, as I was saying, you know, the community is not perfect and by trial and error, we go all the time individually and as a group and as a group of groups. And so, as you may imagine, this has been and it is not easy uh, sometimes, but even though the goal is very clear and so even though um, we have to deal with our personalities sometimes, with our individual and peculiar achievements, you know, as family, profession, or our different fields of interest in life. We try to create a synergy between our individual and group life all the time by assuming the task and the responsibility at all levels. Uh, with trying to build no separation between our spiritual tension and the very practical life. This is what we try always to keep in mind and we remind each other when we meet. Um, all engaged, you know, in, in this, uh, in, in contributing, you know, very, very practically to the different task of running the community as well as achieving, you know, the highest goals as a, as a group consciousness. And this, of course, goes through self-improvement, self-reflectioning within the group field, with all the challenges and opportunity that this offers, you know, in terms of diversity of way of approach, rate apologies, phases of growth of each individual consciousness. So mainly what we try to shift is from a self-centered way of looking at things to give more space to the group purpose. So stepping back individually most of the times to see what is it needed as a group? What is the group vision, wisdom? What is to build a group love and use the creative intelligence, you know, into group expression. And this, as you may imagine, requires a lot of work, a lot of work on each one. And uh, But we can see the beauty of what we can achieve every time we step back individually and we, we contribute to, to a greater purpose. And so learning to surrender the personality level and to positively respond to the call of the soul I think it's the main key that is allowing us to build together and to to offer the opportunity to other people as well to to be part of the community either you know in many ways just being friends of the community coming to the gatherings or taking part of the life of the community so it's really free, even service. People can come for one day in the garden or in the kitchen or come every week or come and live there. <laughs> so it's really a, a beautiful opportunity. Yeah. 
Thank you, Elisabetta. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know if it, I mean, there is so much to say, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take too much time as well. <laughs> but if there are questions, I will be happy also to answer. And, uh, and, and then before we close, I also would like to say a few, wor a few words about um, our community, uh, the Himalayan community of living ethics, you know, yeah, we, the we, we, initiative we can, in India. Yeah. yeah, we can leave it as a cherry for the on the on the top. Okay. Yeah, because okay. that's another <laughs> like extended part of what community is doing, and so yes, uh, we definitely want to talk about that. Um, uh, I thought maybe now we we could open the sharing and open the floor for people because, as you said, it's not just the community; it's the, the family. Uh, like uh, and of friends of the community and many people uh, who've been uh, some in one or another way connected with the community, visiting you or just meeting you somewhere, uh, got that spark of that love that comes from the land of the community and, yeah. and staying with those people. So maybe people could share about their experience of community. What does it mean? Yes, it would be wonderful. Yes, if anybody from the community or other friends want to add and share, you know, because as we, I said before, you know, this is really creating the field of exchange between us. So I really would like also to hear from others. And so the way how we usually do the exchange, uh, that uh, everyone is now muted, even though we visualize that we're in a circle and we are all here equals, but for technical reasons, we have to mute uh, all of us and only those who wants to speak, I will unmute. So in order, if you want to speak or share, or like share something, uh, please re use the function of raising your hand. It's on your control panel. It's a button with the hand icon. So just press that and I will see that you want to speak and I will unmute you. And so far I saw there was uh, one hand and I will unmute uh, Rosa Maria. Elisabetta and friends, this was so beautiful the way you exposed and the presentation of the pictures of, of the sculpture. <laughs> it is so amazed. My question is, relating to the maintenance of the buildings and all these places that you have. How do you have the resources to do that? Well, uh, as I was saying before, uh, since the beginning, everything is done on a volunteer work basis. So we go there for, you know, helping in the kitchen. We help with the gardens. And uh, all the income from the courses go to the community. And, uh, and so we pay everything through the incomes that we receive from the participants uh, to the seminars and courses. But we receive also donations. And we received a lot of donations uh, during the years. And this is still allowing us, you know, through our uh, group effort and the donations to, to run the place. But there is a lot of volunteer work also that is done by many, many, many of us. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we look forward to seeing you soon in Italy. <laughs> yes. We need to Skype, Elisabetta. <laughs> we will. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Elisabetta, this is Angus at Findhorn. Hello, how are you? So Hi, nice. how lovely to hear you. Yes, pleasure to have you here tonight. It's lovely to join you. Yeah. And uh, I've visited you two times. Mm -hmm. And a, a strong impression is. Um, the maintenance of such a high quality, uh, both in terms of individual, um, how can one say, soul embodiment, and how that is reflected in the beauty, as you say, beauty and simplicity of uh, of the surroundings and the buildings, but also in the work that's done. And it is so impressive to experience what you call the, the spiritual tension 
um, that is required in order to to hold and maintain this. It yes. is truly an inspiration. Yes, thank you, thank you. It's really a joy to have you here tonight. Thank you. This is Malia, and I would like to know if there's a website or books or pamphlets or something so that I can continue to learn more about this beautiful community. Yes, yes, I will uh, show you uh, at the end. We have um, a website that you can go, and we also have an email uh, that you can write to to receive information on the programs and everything. And um, uh, I will uh, I will put it on the screen at the end of our meeting. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you from? I'm living right near London, Ontario, in Canada. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you. Thank you, and you too. Thank you. Uh, now we're unmuted. Uta? Hello. Hello, Uta. Hello. Hello, Elisabetta. Thank Hello. you. Hello. Great uh, picture that you painted, a synthetic picture of the community. And I would like to take this opportunity to um, share my gratitude and my joy of the cooperation, the many cooperations that you as a community are uh, uh, developing. Um, and we in our little group in Israel have received so much support and um, inspiration and uh, friendship from uh -huh. you, from so many of you in the, in the community. It's really a weaving. You are um, like a like a leavening, how you say, in the uh, in the yeah yeast <laughs> in the, uh, of the plant. And uh, what the seeds that you are uh, planting locally in Italy are uh, you you also ex uh, through your generosity through so much richness um, you spread them all over the world. Um, and we in Israel, in our little center, have uh, so much, um, um, how you say, uh, um, received from you, and this makes it possible, um, yeah, to to participate in the in the growing um, world group. You are really a very bright star uh, in the world group. Thank you so much, and it's it's a great joy that uh, um, this 2025 initiative now has uh, given also the opportunity. Thank you, Alexander, and everybody there for for making the community of living ethics uh, a little bit more uh, shining at night out into the world. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I like to thank you, Uta, as well, and the group in Israel. As I was saying before, we are we have these beautiful connections with so many groups, and we learn. We all learn all the time uh, through our sharing. Uh, it is a work on consciousness, and so we enrich each other every time. So thank you, thank you, and thank you to all the friends in Israel. Yeah. Um, Elizabeth, I have a question. At the very beginning, you mentioned that yes, the way how you see community, it's not so much as just like a physical building or even activities, but it's as a, a state of mind, a state of consciousness. Of consciousness, yes. Yeah, state of consciousness, and it's a uh, uh, that's. Uh, direct quote from the Tibetan when he talks that the ashram is not uh, a place, it's a state of consciousness. And yes, I, through all these years, you, uh, like through all your work, I think what you're doing, it's part of what we can call the process of externalization of the hierarchy 
and of the ashrams. And I, I always thought that somehow like we understand it's a little bit too direct. What does it mean externalization of the ashrams? And it's a uh, was big discovery for me when I read this quote at the Tibetan that it's the state of consciousness. And so maybe you could share more about that. Like, how do you see that? What does it mean? This community is a state of consciousness. Yeah, um, because as we know, we are normally uh, used to think of places and groups, you know, as, as um, gatherings of people. But building a state of consciousness in group formation means also uh, working toward establishing, you know, a group initiation, which is we know the hierarchy is looking for. It's uh, the capacity. Uh, to really um, step back from the personality level and to create the conditions to establish the one soul that we are already part of and make this uh, soul consciousness be embodied in the everyday living through a group work and um, and this really makes a difference because it's not only how much we study and uh, how much we are in touch with the teaching and we understand the teachings, but how much are we in, uh, able to embody it into a group formation, into practical life, uh, sometimes renouncing, you know, to our personal will toward the creation of a common good, a wider common good, that, which is not just a community, but is like offering the community as a seed, uh, as a model, and uh, within the body of humanity for anchoring these laws and principles uh, that uh, Master Decay defined of the, the Kingdom of God. So this is has been really the core for us and uh, and every time also we have to make decisions we have we open ourselves as a group to a new intuition for a new level of service that we can offer uh, we attune as a group consciousness and uh, so the shift is huge you know if we consider how the world is built upon individuality mainly and uh, in this case, what we try to do is to synthesize and to combine the individual with the group and perceive and act as a group consciousness, whatever we do. And, um, and I think this is really the richness of what we have learned among the years. And to bring it into form for us means to embody it into our mental, astral, and physical, but also through activities, through new models of life, which is another step. And, uh, and this can be achieved if we are um, trying to identify as much as possible as one soul, as a group soul, uh, because this brings a quality and an energy that you cannot find when you try to build on the personality level whatever you want to build. I don't know if this answered mm. your question. Yeah, it's well, it's not the, the, the direct question. It's open question for all of us. And I, uh, I would appreciate maybe if anyone else would uh, sh like to share, maybe Uta or Angus or anyone in the audience. So... Um, I think it's very good question for all of us to ponder, especially under the synergies of Aquarius. What is group consciousness? So if anyone has a sharing on that or any other sh uh, topic or maybe question or comment, please. So I will... Um, Unmute uh, L Lorraine. Hi, good evening. Hi, Alexandra. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Good to hear you. It's been really good to hear you as well. And um, uh, congratulations on a wonderful, wonderful uh, sharing because it, it, the 
to answer Alexander's question, not, not fully, but to offer a perspective on it, um, group consciousness for me is evidenced in a number of ways in partly just the sharing that you did tonight was better because that the, the combination of the language, the pictures, the, um, the stories, the examples um, was, was so multidimensional um, and, and touched on so many different levels that for me that was an aspect of group consciousness because although you're the, the, the voice for the community here tonight um, and maybe it's because I've had the privilege of, of being um, a reasonably frequent visitor in the last few years uh, but, but it, everything you described was very um, very easy to connect with, very easy to touch and, and feel and sense and, and be with and um, for me that's an aspect of, of the uh, soul energy of the group um, at Chieta de la Pieva and uh, the community. Um, another thing I would say about my experience of group consciousness as um, the community of living ethics uh, live it and, and create it is that it feels very um, permeable and by that I mean as a visitor, as someone who comes into the community from the outside, it can often be, in my experience of, of working with groups, there's, there's often that sense of um, needing to make your way in, needing to find a way to belong, needing to find the, the rules, in a sense, or the way in which it works. And clearly the community has, has its ways of working but the thing that was is the biggest difference for me and, and um, the biggest expression of a group consciousness is the is the way in which one can um, almost morph into the community, almost become an, uh, another part of it, another molecule within the consciousness. Um, and that's partly to do with the openness and the generosity and friendliness and and you know those sort of more human aspects, but for me it's no it, there's no doubt that it's about the group field that's being created and and the 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 genuine sense in which one can um, participate in that group field and because it's operating at the level of soul and of consciousness and and a higher vibration. Uh, it's not about personality or, or um, protocols or, or conventions. It's it's you genuinely connect that space of of consciousness. So for me, those are a couple of examples of of how the community of living ethics created. In terms of for us you know, outside of that particular grouping and and more broad Aquarian group consciousness. I think there are a lot of lessons here that we can uh, take forward. The the willingness, the courage to look for new ways of um, creating the civilization uh, in our own worlds, in our own immediate lives, um, closer to home, or with the groups that we work with in our own communities. Um, not looking to create stuckness or, or, or structures that have to be fixed but allowing fluidity and um, emergence, new things to, inviting new things in um, as part of that group consciousness as well as um, the obvious practices of um, uh, leading from the soul rather than from the ego and, and the personality. Um, hopefully we're all focused on that anyway but at the group consciousness level I think it is about experimentation, openness, fluidity, allowing things to 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 come into the field and be prepared to, to really explore and experiment and, and um, see what comes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. I think it's always also uh, something connected of in uh, with an attitude of, you know, 
learning all the time, you know, mm -hmm. being able to learn and to change and to adapt and to shift and to let go and to move on, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, which creates, you know, this movement, this mm -hmm. uh, spiral where people can come in and out, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it thank you. So it's very easy, very easy, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you for all the gifts that you bring to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Uh, Christina, uh, you muted yourself, so please unmute Christine more. I unmuted you. Okay, so um, when you just uh, you can speak when you will figure out your microphone. And Hello? Alexander. Yes, yes, we can. Yes. Hear you. Hello. Calling from uh, the United States, and Hello. I just want to, I just want to express how full my heart is listening to this. It gives me such hope. I would like to add another dimension to this, however. Uh, I'm connected to, in the past to many groups, right now, but uh, what I'd like to say is that. Uh, will certainly be a year of letting go and also many structures uh, that we globally have been attached to like you Italy are a well-known religious country and uh, is you providing an alternative that structure begins breaking. Can you hear me? Uh, Christine, your sound's a little bit breaking, like kind of going on and off. Yeah. Well, what I'm talking about, again, is that we are at a point I don't hear anything. You can't hear me? Yeah, like I, I can hear like on the background. So if you can like give the, your question, I could like repeat it. But so far, well, what, I, what I've heard that like you said, like this, it's time of when the old religious foundations like uh, like falling apart. And so you, especially in Italy, where uh, religion uh, traditionally been playing a big role, uh, can places like your community can give a support. That's what we've heard so far, Christine. So what is yes. your question? I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to add another dimension. Oh, thank you. Yeah. What you're saying, that's what gives me hope. Because you are of a very high resonant community. Yeah. That is why we're here. Yeah. Which to each begin, I say my work is an inside job, so that's where I need to to go to continually increase my vibration to be in a community like yours. Mm -hmm. So that's the work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Uh, I will end with uh, Nancy. Okay. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes. Hi. Okay. Well, first of all, a big thank you to Alexander for making this possible. And a huge thank you to our um, Elisabetta for presenting such a magnificent um, picture of the life that you're living there the community and the consciousness and the beauty, which is such an incredible statement of where you are in consciousness. It's, it's an amazing thing to see an outpicturing of the soul in action, as it were. 
I haven't yet had the, the privilege of visiting, but I have a lot of close connections with the community and know a lot about it, and I hope that one day I will have that privilege. I wanted to ask you, Elisabetta, yeah. Elisabetta. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, a question about where you are as a group in terms of developing the kind of soul consciousness that you're talking about, which is the goal of all of us in this time. If there's any universal goal that I think we have as, as disciples, it is to create outposts of soul consciousness. And, and I wanted to ask you, um, first of all, how, what percentage of the people in the community have lived there for a long time and are further along in embodying that soul consciousness um, versus new people who come and go? And, and second of all, um, what are the major challenges that you, you find that you face in making the shift from individual, individual persona to group soul, group consciousness? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, regarding the first question, um, uh, we have here, around here, living around the community about 60 people who decided uh, to um, change in a way also their life. Many of us moved from other cities. For instance, I just give you an example of myself. I was working as a manager with Alitalia for all my life and at a certain point I just decided to leave the work and come to the community and use my time and energy uh, in service to not just the community itself, but the community as a model of a, a new way of group work, of a, you know the embodiment of a cell of a new life. So many people who committed to the community since the beginning moved here. They many left their you know their professions where they were living before and moved here. And we also faced, uh, you know, um, moments where we were asking, for instance, to the founder of the community, many were making this question, I would like to come to the community, but um, uh, you don't pay anybody in the community. Uh, how can I live? You know, how can I make it possible, you know, to come closer to the community? And at that time, you know, even if you it would seem to be difficult to accept, uh, he would say, you know, that um, what we were engaging was um, to work, to, to, to found the beauty of service, the importance of service in life. And so the people who moved were only the ones who really decided to make a big shift and um, to change completely from their own individual interest, profession or whatever, into something wider. And now, after so many years, I realize the importance of not having been paid for whatever we have done in the community, which I think it's also answered the second questions. You know, how do you perceive uh, that you are so connected that uh, where do you stand? And I think you know that service is one of the major um, aspects that are like um, it's like um, the, the 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 point where we can um, realize uh, if we are ready also to to shift and to change to something wider. And I think uh, that uh, after so long, uh, it is still a, a very important opportunity, uh, that of uh, serving here in the community. Because um, otherwise, when we do work and we're paid for what we do inside groups, you know, we don't become so fully aware of what does it mean, you know, to, to find ways to support also in terms of material giving our time and giving our work. I don't know if this uh, answers your question in a way. 
Yes, it does in a way. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll let somebody else um, ask a question. But thank, thank you so much. I, the spirit of the community that you convey is really something to behold, and I'm very, very grateful for being here today. So yes, please. and I look forward to meet you, and uh, you know, we will give our you know website and email address you know of our secretariat. So you're really welcome to come and share with us anytime. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I thought, Elisabetta, that we wouldn't have enough time for, to share everything. And but there's still like two questions which I'd like you to answer very quickly because we need to kind of to move to meditation and uh, wrap up soon. Uh, one important question asked by uh, Melia Helson. Melia Helson. How does the leadership function in uh, in the community? So, if you can just like very quick answer. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, since the passing the veil of our founder six years ago, we have shifted uh, to a shared leadership, uh, organized around the different circles or levels of responsibility and function within the community. So we have uh, a board of trustees who hold the focus on the purpose and plan of the community. The strategies, the final decisions are taken from this group that is composed of 12 members, of which five have also an official guiding function connected uh, you know, to the status of the community as an association. Then we have another circle which is composed of 12 more people working as executive coordinators with the specific organizational functions. And so they coordinated uh, specific areas of responsibility connected mainly with the running of the operations of the activity of the community. Um, Others of, uh, within these 12 are related to education, to culture, to research, to healing. And then we have another circle formed of all the co-workers engaged with the specific functions within each area. So we have many sectors. And then there is another circle, which is what we call the friends of the community, that is composed of all the members who occasionally also participate to the service activities and the training courses, who are in a certain way approaching and willing to contribute to the overall community life, of course, according to their individual peculiar situation. They come when they can, you know. And um, the entire group meets also in plenary formation with, um, at Vesak and Scorpio twice a year and uh, with the aim of creating, what to say, uh, two moments of synthesis for the group life and activities and also occasions for launching new projects and new initiatives. And the decision-making process um, it, of course, uh, follows the different different steps, you know, and involves the different circles that I've said before. There are phases, for instance, in the work, which inputs and suggestions comes from all the co-workers and the responsible of the areas are collected and brought together, you know, to the board. Or proposals are presented by, you know, the board to the responsible areas and so on. Then usually follows a phase of analysis and feasibility to see, uh, which is carried out through a united effort, you know, by the board and the coordinators of the areas. And then a final decision is taken from the board. But after, you know, plenty of considerations, you know, from all those who are involved in the process. And also what we do is that a complete overview of the entire community structure and the functionality of the community 
also takes place every three years in order to, um, how to say, to uh, verify, eventually make adjustments in the organization of the life of the community, always with the aim of better responding to the pursuing of the community purpose. And presently, for instance, this year we are engaged in one of these three-year cycles of reviewing the entire structure of the community. So maybe next time we will speak, we will have another <laughs> composition. That, that would be lovely that like if we could have a follow-up webinar on that because there are, I'm sure there are many themes and topics that you community could share with the bigger community. Uh, mm -hmm. but the last question, which we, we said that we'll have this cherry on the top and there actually already were two written questions uh, about what was the mountain range on this picture, on this switch? <laughs> so can you just like... Yes, I just chose the three, four pictures, but the, this should need a full presentation by yeah, itself. That should be another <laughs> webinar that I just realized. Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> but maybe well, just like say, give, give us like a teaser line for the future webinar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About well, it, it's the Himalayan community of living ethics, which was founded in India in 2005 by the members of the Italian community in close cooperation with the Darjeeling Goodwill Animal Shelter in India. And uh, this um, association comprises two centers in the eastern Himalayas of the West Bengal, just very close to the Kanchenjunga. You see the Kanchenjunga. This is the view from, you know, Crookedy House. <laughs> The aim of anchoring and spreading the living ethics, you know, in the foothills of the Himalayan range. And so we have two centers. One is the International Center for Agni Yoga in Krukiji House in Kalimpong, which was the house where Helena Rerik spent, yeah, this is the picture, she spent the last two years of her life. And um, Krukeri House provides a base for residential activities uh, linked with the seminars and travel experiences. And um, so we also have uh, accommodation for guests who want to, um, you know, contact the energy of this place and who wish to live a community life based on meditation, study and service as we do in the community and mainly is based on the study of the Agni Yoga teachings and then we have the Darjeeling Goodwill Center which carries out um, cultural and educational activities for the local population and this is in Darjeeling it's a couple of hours from Crookedy House and uh, there we organize the work together with Indian inter and international co-workers and with, uh, also with NGOs. And this is the picture of the stupa where the ashes of Elena Rurik were buried. But as I said, you know, this would require <laughs> much more just a presentation itself. And I, also for this, I will send to Alexander the um, references, you know, if you want to be in touch and you want yes, to please. visit. Yes, please. Yes. Yes. Maybe you can send out an email with this... Um, uh, we'll include this contact information. Uh, this uh, contact information will be on our Facebook page and on our... Uh, okay. archive page for this webinar there will be all this okay, information. Okay, so I will give the telephone numbers and the yes. web and the emails uh, for both the community and for India. Yeah. Yes, and maybe the next webinar about uh, your, activi com your community's activity in, in India we could do from India. I don't know, from yeah, Jailing or Kalimpong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be a wonderful see. connection. Yeah. So, I think we are now ready to move to meditation and because yeah we, we took a little bit longer for our presentation uh, to go so probably our meditation will exceed a little bit our regular time so please bear with us. I will try my best to keep it uh... okay so let's uh, prepare for meditation
we take a few deep breaths and bring our attention to the Ajna Center. We relax our physical body. Quiet our emotions. Free our mind from any previous thoughts and we bring it to a point of focus. Now we visualize a line of light extending back from the Ajna center into the cave in the center of the head. Anchoring itself in the cave in a small golden sun. Gradually we withdraw the focus of consciousness along this line of light becoming centered within the small golden sun in the center of the head. And here we identify as this conscious soul incarnated within the threefold instrument. And we can sound an arm. via a line of light extending upwards through the head center. We connect with the overshadowing soul and with the group soul. And we acknowledge the presence of all the brothers and sisters spread all over the world who are celebrating today the full moon of Aquarius. And we link heart to heart, forming a center of spiritual force, of love and power within the body of humanity. We can visualize all these individuals and groups as radiant points of light connected one another by a network of golden streams of light covering the entire planet. These streams of light represent channels through which spiritual light and love circulate on the planet. 
throughout humanity, to all kingdoms of nature. And we recollect our purpose to celebrate together this full moon of Aquarius. And we connect with its motto, which is water of life we are poured forth to thirsty men. And we now align with the ashramic group life. With our elder brothers and sisters who guide our life. And with the overshadowing presence of the Christ the coming one. We open ourselves to the inflow of divine purpose, divine love, Divine Wisdom and we visualize light and love and spiritual power flowing into humanity strengthening all that is being done to help prepare the way for a world of unity justice and peace And we imbue ourselves with these divine energies And we radiate them out to our fellow men, to all humanity, and to all kingdoms of nature. And we can close by sounding the great invocation, Sound, followed by three arms. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth 
into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much, and we will keep our connection through this month. And, uh, okay. Um, our next webinar in the Pisces Solar Festival would be with uh, Philip Lindsay from Australia. Uh, Philip, are you here? I'm not sure if the connection is good with Philip, but uh, yes, so if the next webinar would be on a, a topic of esoteric astrology, which exact topic will be decided and would be announced additionally. One more time, thank you, Elisabetta, and thank you for all your brothers and sisters in the community for bringing this. Thank you. Thank you all. Energy. It has been a great pleasure to be with all of you tonight. Thank you. Uh, have a good rest of the time of the... Thank you.